So my dough has been in the fridge for a couple hours and it's time to roll out the dough. I've got my lard heating up. The only thing I ever deep fry in is lard because I love lard. But you could use sunflower oil with good results. I don't really like things like canola oil, but if that's what your family uses, that's what your family uses. You do you. And. So I actually have, I have more cast iron pots that I need. So I have this one Dutch oven that I just keep the lard in because you use it four or five times. I need these for you, thank you. Before it's done. So kind of my process is that I'll use it three or four times for things like donuts or french fries that don't flavor the oil. And then the last time I use it will be like fish or um, we're gonna make spring rolls this afternoon. So, I'm at my sister's house and I don't have my neat vintage. My mom is taking pictures of me right now and it's very distracting, mother. When your mother's a photographer, you spend your whole life. Okay, just one more picture. Just think when she's a famous YouTuber, all her photos. So, I don't have my neato vintage donut cutter, but that's to your advantage. I'm gonna show you how you MacGyver your own. You get a canning ring. This is a wide mouth canning ring, so like this size. And then I have a water bottle and my stepdad cut off the top for me. And this is gonna be your donut hole. So first we'll cut this and then we'll cut this. I actually might use a small mouth. I think proportionately, this is gonna be better for a small mouth canning use ring. this. No, that would be too big. Actually, here's a biscuit cutter. That's about right. Okay, so we're gonna use this biscuit cutter, but you can use a canning ring and the top of a water bottle for your donut hole. Basically, MacGyver yourself a donut hole cutter so that you can make some donuts. Normally I would be using a thermometer, but my sister's is catawampus, so I'm kind of doing it by feel here. 
And what I do is I just put in a couple of the donut holes or timbits as we call them in Canada and see how they go. And they rose, they're bubbling beautifully. So unless they burn, but I don't think it's too hot at all, these are gonna be perfect. So, because I'm using a propane stove, which I've never used for deep frying, and because I don't have a thermometer, I'm playing, I'm having to play around a bit. So these, I tried to make the kids letters, uh, that's an M for Mac. This H, and it kind of worked out. Yeah, they were kind of a fail. But these are a little light, and they took longer to fry than they should have. But then these ones here are a little dark, and I don't want them to dry out or get burned. So when I was there, I turned it up a bit. We ended up kind of here, but then it got too hot and we were there, so now I've turned it down again. So there's a bit of playing around that goes on. Then I went to make the icing, and I don't have enough icing sugar here, but I have more at home. So my stepdad ran to my house to go get me more icing sugar. But I'm on the last round. I got one more round of donuts, and then the Timbits to fry, and they're looking good. So what I do is I just drop the donuts gently in. I can fit seven or eight in this pot comfortably. And then once they're floating, I flip them. And then they're gonna need another minute and then they'll be done. And normally I'd use paper towel, but my sister's just about out. So that's, she said I could just use cloths. I used to use tongs, but now I have one of these too because we actually use them for making cheese and they're great for getting them out because you can get about three out on here versus one at a time with tongs. You've never put sprinkles on donuts before. No, it was a special treat today. I know. Are we allowed seconds? After dinner. <laughs> <laughs>